Welcome back to the mountain bike build series. In this video, I'm gonna go through all the tubes and like the dropouts, bottom bracket shell, head tube, cable guides, even uh, all these little materials that are gonna go into the frame that I need to get ordered so that I can start to cut tubes and fabricate and build this thing up. Uh, Cause that's, that's sort of the next step. Let's get into it. So uh, here's BikeCAD. This is pretty much as you saw it in the last video. And um, yeah, so I want to start ordering tubes and stuff so that I can make this thing. The, 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 a lot of the tubes are going to be straight gauge 4130 chromoly tubing. And so for that, I'm going to go to this place called Wix Aircraft and Motorsport, uh, wixaircraft.com. So they sell stuff for people who are like hobby airplane builders and people working on and maintaining airplanes and stuff. And then uh, one of the things that you would use to build an airplane fuselage is 4130 tubing. And so you can buy that here and then, you know, rather than build an airplane, we're building a bike. Uh, so you, you, the, the website's a little bit clunky, but you click through and then uh, they have lists here. There's four pages and they have lists of all this different tubing. Uh, the outside diameter is listed in fractional inch and decimal inch, depending on the size. So that's a little bit clunky, but anyway... And then there's the wall thickness, which, you know, so you have the outside diameter and the wall thickness. And then uh, and then in the part name, if it has AG at the end of it, you know that it was uh, from a mill in America or in Germany. Uh, and the rest of them, you would assume, are in China. I think it describes that up here. And so I have found in my limited experience buying this stuff that the uh, the Chinese mills do not produce things to as nice of a degree of fit and finish for whatever reason. You know, when you buy the tube, it's it's just a little bit cleaner from the American and German mills. When you take emery cloth and you sand through the mill scale, it cleans up uh, faster and more easily. Uh, you know, the American and German stuff, it's like a thinner mill scale. It's just nicer stuff. And... Um, I'm not, I'm not pinching pennies on this. Like I, I don't, I'm not money bags, Joe, but I'm only buying a couple feet of tubing. And so if I spend $40 or $90 on a tubing or something, it's not really that big of a difference for me. So I'll just, uh, generally I'll buy the nicer stuff if I have the option. And, um, structurally, I'm not sure if there's a difference. Um, but you know, let's buy the nicer stuff then I don't need to worry about it. Uh, it contributing to the failure of anything or whatever. So um, for the seat stays, I'm going to use 5 8 diameter tubing with a 28 thousandths of an inch wall thickness. And so I'm looking here in this column outside diameter and I'm going to scroll down till I see 0.625 which is 5 8 of an inch. And then for the wall thickness, I want uh, 28 thousandths of an inch. So there's two of the same basic thing. And if I look over here, one of them has AG in the name, one of them doesn't. And the price difference is considerable. It's like five times as much to get the American slash German stuff. I don't really care. It's worth it. You know, this, this I need like four feet of it. So it'd be like, you know, four or five dollars or, you know, 20 some dollars. Like it's, it's not that big of a difference because I'm only making like one bike. So I'll just get the nice stuff. Uh, so what you do is you click on it and then you click add to cart and then once it's uh, in your cart you would change the quantity so it assumes you want one foot of it but I actually want four feet of it and then I click um, update quantity and now if I go to my drawing here I'll clear that but you know how I how I ascertain the length that I need is I right click anywhere on the drawing right at the end of the tube basically I right click here start linear dimension and then at the end of the tube I right click again and linear dimension and so it says that the the length of the tube is about 440 millimeters and then if I take that number to my calculator so 440, multiply it by two, because there's two of these tubes. So that's about 880, and then I divide that by 25.4. So that says that it's about, you know, uh, 34 and a half inches. And that's like the absolute minimum length that these tubes could be. But realistically, if you're looking at the frame from the auxiliary stay view, so I'll turn that on here. 
uh, you would see that you're actually looking down on these tubes from above. That measurement is kind of going in this direction, a straight line. But what you're actually trying to measure for is like sort of the hypotenuse of a triangle. If you can imagine a triangle here. And, um, and so it's actually a longer dimension that we would need. And then you add into the fact that there's going to be some bends here. These are not exactly representative of what I'm going to do. But you, you need more length than this number. And then uh, I also just don't want to be... Uh, um, I don't want to be sweating the small stuff over the cut lengths on this to make it work out. So, so it said that I needed, um, you know, 35 and a half. So, so that's like three feet. That's like 36 inches, 12 inches and a foot. Um, I could get three feet of tubing and I might squeak it out of there. I'm just going to buy four feet and give myself some wiggle room. So four feet of tubing at this price. Now I think I already have that in my cart actually. And if I go to my cart now, I can show you um five eighths tubing but then here it is again and there it is another time so i need to remove some of these and again remove this one so i'm only going to buy three different tubes from this supplier i'm going to get the five eighths tubing four feet of it three quarter tubing and for for the chain stays same process uh chain stays I'm going to, <laughs> uh, it, I'll use three quarter inch tubing here by 035 wall, which is, so, so in the United States, when they sell this tubing, there's like, there's common wall thicknesses and there's 028 wall, 035 wall, 049 wall, 065 wall. It goes up and up. There's different wall thicknesses. And so, uh, I'm just taking a guess here based on, Stuff that I'm used to seeing and stuff that I'm used to working and stuff that I'm used to welding. If the wall gets real thick, it's easier to weld. If the wall gets real thin, it becomes harder to weld. So I'm sort of balancing these considerations and taking a guess about what kind of wall thickness I want on these tubes. Um, for these stays, maybe instead of 035 wall, I could be doing 028 wall. No, I'm not really sure. I'm just going to get 035 wall. Uh, seems a little bit safer with my lack of experience. I know that I can weld it. I know that it'll work. And then uh, this one here is inch and three eighths by 035 wall. And that's for this seat tube here. So I'm gonna put a bend in it. I don't really want it to be super thin in the bend area. I don't, um, you're not gonna have very good luck bending tubing if it is heat treated. And so for those reasons, I don't really wanna use like bike specific seat tube material. I'll just start with um, a straight gauge tube. So 34.9 millimeter or inch and three eighths tube. And then at the top here, I'm gonna weld in a seat collar. And if I go to Paragon Machine Works, that would be this tab. And if I go to my cart, you can see the things that I picked out. So Paragon Machine Works is a great, they have a very good website. It makes it pretty easy to navigate all this stuff. And um, this one here is the seat collar. And so they have a couple options for these seat collars. I'll just go to them. Frame building parts, miscellaneous, view all, and seat collars. So they have uh, titanium, and they have steel, and they have stainless. And I want steel. The reason that I want to get steel is you can't weld titanium into a steel frame. You could usually weld stainless steel into a titanium frame. But after I weld it, I'm going to go in there with a reamer and I'm going to make sure that I get a nice fit between my seat post and my seat collar. And I don't want stainless steel for that because stainless steel is harder on cutting tools and it's harder to get a good cut. And I don't have a good seat tube reamer. So I want to use 4130 steel instead of like 304 stainless, which is I think what these are. Uh, and I think I already explained these seat collars, but I'll just explain them again for anyone who's not familiar. Uh, this tube here, the whole length of it is going to be, the main length of it is going to be straight gauge tubing. So the outside is inch and three eighths and the inside is some whatever it is. It's, it's inch and three eighths minus the wall thickness times two because there's two walls. There's this side and there's that side. And so if it's 035 wall thickness, then you're really subtracting 70 thousandths off the diameter of the tube. And that leaves you with some um, random size that's not the same size as what you want for the seat post. And so uh, there are some bike specific tubes that have the right inside dimension. But um, 
Uh, that's not what I'm doing here. I, I want to have a little section at the top that's maybe, you know, three inches or 80 millimeters or so long on the top that uh, that I weld in this seat collar that has the right inside dimension. And so that's what this is for. Uh, you weld this to the, the other tube. So there's this little step here and uh, that slips in to your tube and then uh, you, you weld it together or you could braise it together and then uh, you weld your, your top tube and your seat stays to this thing. And so you can get them that already have the step machined in there. And uh, I don't want to do that. I want to get this one because I have my own lathe. And so uh, it comes a little bit long. What is this? Like three and a half inches long, which is like 80 or 90 millimeters long. And then uh, I'll put this on my lathe when I get it and I will cut it to whatever length I want. And then I will machine a step in there so that it slides nicely into the tube that I have. Uh, I want to do that machining on my terms when I get it. That's easy enough to do. Saves me from having to finalize my design any sooner than I need to. Uh, you know, for a onesie twosie thing, this makes me more comfortable. So uh, I'm getting this and I was also going to get from them a bottom bracket shell in steel and I was going to get a threaded one and I was going to get it in a two inch diameter. So what that will show you is the T47 bottom bracket shells. This one here is uh, 47 millimeters wide so that after you machine it, it becomes, it's not 47, it's 74 uh, millimeters wide. So after you machine it, it becomes 73 millimeters wide. So they, they supply these a little bit long so that when you weld them, there's some distortion and stuff that goes on. And then you can uh, face the ends of it and get the, the ends of it square again. And they start extra wide so that you have enough material there to do that facing. Uh, you want the finish width of this to be 73 millimeters, which is like sort of the traditional mountain bike standard. And uh, that's what I'm doing. Um, so I guess I forgot to say, I got sidetracked here. I, the, the top tube and the down tube now, I could do straight gauge tubing, um, but there's actually options for these to be bike specific butted tubes. And when you do this forward geometry mountain bike, these tubes are like a mile long. They're so long. Uh, traditional bike tubes will not cover this, but actually if you go to Nova Cycle Supply, they have some uh, that I think are long enough. So this one, uh, let's do the measurement again. If I right click, you know, somewhere in here, start linear dimension, and then I right click again here, end linear dimension. So uh, 786 is like the length that that tube needs to be. And if I go to Nova, and if I go to my cart, So here we go. This is a uh, you know 29er mountain bike down tube, 38.1 millimeter. The wall profile is 969, so nine tenths of a millimeter on the butts and six tenths of a millimeter in the middle. And this thing is 865 millimeters long. That is a long, long boy. And uh, that's definitely long enough, which is good because traditional down tubes were never even, they were almost never even 750. Uh, you know, they, they didn't need to be that long generally. And then for the top tube, let's clear this dimension. I need this to be start linear dimension and go to here and linear dimension. So at least 650 really needs to be a little bit longer than 650. Is the one in my cart actually that long? So this is 635. It's not long enough. Let's see if we can find one. So uh, on the Nova, we'll just go through it here. On the Nova tube website, you go tubes, steel, then you click main tubes, uh, round tubes. So I'm not doing shaped tubes on this bike. And now for the top tube, 31.7 top and down tubes, top tubes from that selection. And now I want one that's really long. So 635, what did I say? 653, so it needs to be longer than 653. Da, 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 da. How long is this one? 680 long. This can also be used as a top tube because it has very long butts. Yeah, so it's listed as a down tube, but thankfully uh, the folks at Nova put this also in the top tube selection. That's smart. 
and the wall thickness profiles, 969. I like that. 969, if you're building like a road bike, maybe that's a little bit heavier wall profile. But if you're building a mountain bike, uh, maybe that's more appropriate. Uh, that could be good. So I want, I want the 969 profile and uh, 680 long. Yeah, that's good. So add this one to cart. And now I can delete this other one. Uh, this one is too short. So I have a top tube and a down tube that work. That is good. What else here? So for the head tube, if I go to Paragon, nope, here we go. Frame building parts and then head tubes, steel. I already had this picked out, but I guess it uh, dropped out of my shopping cart. So I want this one. This is a 44 millimeter head tube, 130 millimeters long. So if I look at my drawing, 130 millimeters. Yeah, I kind of wanted to make my own head tube, but that's not worth it. Uh, this thing here for what, $11.70? Like, come on, what am I What am I thinking? I'll just buy this. The, the reason that I was thinking about making my own, there's two reasons. So one of the cool things about Paragon is if you click here, there's a PDF drawing. They have this for like all the parts basically. And this shows you the profile of the tube that they machine. So one of the things I don't like about Paragon head tubes, there's two things. One of them is that the inside is relieved. So it's uh, it's a smaller diameter here and then it's relieved with a taper to a larger diameter here. This is really cool. I made heat sinks for welding these head tubes and uh, I, I made it based on straight gauge tube. And um, I don't like that these have a relief. They don't fit my heat sinks quite as well. And so that's not really a big deal unless you already have heat sinks that don't fit it very well. Uh, I can live with that. I think my heat sinks will probably work fine. They just won't conduct the heat out quite as nicely because they're not gonna fit quite as perfect against uh, this this profile because of that taper and this the changing diameter and whatever. That's fine. The other thing that I don't really like about these head tubes is that everybody uses them and they have a very distinct aesthetic. There's like a particular radius here and a particular diameter and they just look a certain way and everybody uses these and the titanium ones look kind of the same. And so, uh, you know, five, 10 years ago, maybe it wasn't quite so ubiquitous. Nowadays, everybody uses these, they all look the same. So I think I'm gonna buy this and then I'm going to put it on my lathe and I'm going to actually uh, cosmetically change it a little bit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just tweak the diameter a little bit. It's, um, it's a little bit meatier than it maybe needs to be anyway. Uh, certainly if you're building like a road bike, I think these are meatier than they need to be. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna tune it up a little bit, change the aesthetic just a little bit so it's not so obviously the Paragon head tube. Nothing wrong with that. I'm just, you know, trying to, if if you think like, what if I had a bike frame and a finished bike and I were to strip the paint off and pull off the head badge, is there really anything about that frame that differentiates it from everybody else? And, uh, you know, I would kind of like it to look a little bit different. So, um, you know, it's just me, but, uh, I, I want the head tube to look a little bit different. And then, uh, the bottom bracket shell and the seat collar. So those are the things from Paragon. These are the things I'm gonna get from Nova. And then if you go to Bike Fabrication Supply, uh, this is a newer outfit. You know, I haven't bought a whole lot of frame building supplies in the last like two years or so. And uh, when I used to buy frame building supplies, I either was totally unaware of these guys or they hadn't existed yet. And so they're a little bit newer on the scene and I, I wanna buy some stuff from them. Uh, unfortunately, most of the things I need, the specific things I need, they don't have too much of, but, um, but I, I am getting a couple things. So if I go to my cart here, I got some filler rod. Uh, it's been a long time since I bought ER70S2 TIG filler rod. And so I'm going to get a pound of that in 045 diameter and in 035 diameter. And a pound of TIG filler rod is a lot when you make bikes. Like, if you're not welding bikes every single day, a pound could last you years. So um, this will be good to have around. And then uh, the stainless steel toothbrush. Uh, I had one or two of these, but they got dirty with different projects. So, uh, you know, I should buy more than two. I should buy just five of these. That They cost, what, 87 cents each or something. And then... Um, and then the bottle boss nuts, you know, for water bottle cages, uh, you can never have too many of these around. You never want to run out of these in the middle of a build. And so uh, these are real cheap. I'm just going to buy another 20 of these. And then, uh, yeah, let's just click around the website here. They got some cool stuff. For steel tubing, they have uh, a lot of data, data, uh, data chai stuff. And um, 
Uh, Columbus 2, maybe? Uh, I'm not exactly sure. They definitely have data stuff. But anyway, uh, Zero Uno, that's like a, that's a product line from data, data chai. Uh, a lot of these tubes I think of as being more of like road bike tubes, but then if you go into the uh, seat stays and chain stays, they got some weird stuff. There's some like really interesting tubes. Now, I want to use straight gauge tubes on the rear, and then I want to bend them on my tube bender. But, uh, man, they got some cool stuff back here. This one I thought was really cool. Uh, just like these wacky, wacky profile. Look at this. It's like oval in a cross section that you wouldn't expect. I'm almost tempted to use this single bend uh, on the on the mountain bike, but I want to use my O2 bender for for that. Uh, and then they got, they got hole saws and different stuff. So th this is a cool supplier that didn't used to exist. Uh, I don't know how many years they've been on the scene, but, you know, Five years ago, I'm pretty sure they did not exist. So anyway, uh, I'm excited to get a couple things from them. And uh, so what else is left on the bike? There's like cable guides and stuff. I think I have in stock in my little Brazon kit what I need to do the cable guides on this bike. Then you have like the little ISO tab here. I'm going to do an ISO brake mount for a couple reasons. I'll get into that later. Um, well, for steel bikes, I think ISO is a good standard, even though it's like a dinosaur standard. And then for the dropouts, I'm not going to use the ones that are modeled here, but um, I think I'm going to use Sintase dropouts from Paragon Machine Works, and I think I already have those. So if I go to the Paragon website, nope, yeah, this one here, and then I go to da, 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 dropouts, Sintase. Um, so those are, they have stain, stainless steel, titanium, and steel. I want steel ones. And then they, they basically make them in different sizes. So there's, um, there's narrower widths and wider widths, and then there's the diameter changes. So here the outside diameter is 25.4. No, 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 no. So here, yeah, one inch diameter, one inch diameter, inch and a quarter diameter, and then also, uh... 20.5 millimeter width or 25.4, 24.5 millimeter width. Anyway, they, they come in different widths and diameters. And uh, really the main reason you would choose the, choose the larger ones is if you have a big, uh, a big fat cross section tube that you're trying to weld to it, uh, you need more meat on the dropout hood. And if you're using like, uh, you know, traditionally the rear end tubes uh, with steel bikes are tapered and they come to a pretty small point and you can you can weld those smaller points onto here. There's plenty of room. So it depends what kind of tubes you're using on the rear end. And uh, I think I need the medium or the large size because I'm using that three quarter inch diameter um, chainstay. So I need to work that out and, uh, and I'll buy a pair of these if I have to. Uh, I think I've gone over these in a different video once, but th these are a really cool design for a number of reasons. Uh, you can read a little bit about them here on this on this page. Uh, really cool. It allows you, if, if for some reason your frame fixture doesn't have perfect alignment or if the weld sequence and like welding distortion pulls, pulls your frame a little bit out of alignment, you can kind of get it back. You can cheat it back with these, which is a really cool feature. And the way that the, the hanger mounts is really cool and... Um, I like these. Uh, since I'm doing a through axle build, I think I'm going to use these these dropouts. So uh, I think that pretty much covers it for the materials for the frame that I need to order. And uh, I'm going to put through these orders and I'm going to get this stuff so that we can move along with the build series. It's been slow. I apologize. I got a lot of stuff going on. I traveled quite a bit in March. And um, yeah, so we're back on it, and uh, you can expect more. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the next uh, bike design video, and um, I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.